everyone, my name is Brett Keen, and uh, today we are going to talk about one of the biggest failures of the Nation of Islam. Many of you have probably heard for many years the name Malcolm X. Malcolm X was the name of a great leader who stood up for the black community. He believed in equality and he believed that a man should be able to have his own house for his own people. It's understandable. Every tribe from the beginning of man, from every group, from every social group, from every network, everyone's always wanted to have their own separate deal, their own styles, their own acceptance. Everybody's wanted something. It's the way it's always been. Malcolm X started out a guy who was just struggling, a survivor who stole and robbed and did some pretty bad things when he was growing up. But later on, once he went to prison, he got basically enlightened by a man who was a Muslim. The Muslim taught him about God, taught him about the Quran, taught him about how screwed up society is and the underlining lies that are there if you scratch through the surface. When Malcolm X got out of prison, he decided to work with the religion known as Islam and he tried to promote his agenda was to actually help Muslims build mosques and temples all over the United States of America. He wanted to raise awareness to the black community as well as everyone else that there was a great thing going on in society. He believed that Allah was the one true God and in every speech and in every praise that he did for the nation of Islam, he gave great respect and love and tolerance for the people around him. When he was first starting out, though, when he was just starting to get into his whole charismatic routine, it was believed that he was racist and prejudiced. Because he had had so much problems with white people as well as Mexicans throughout his life, he put a lot of blame on society's troubles on white people. But later on in his whole situation, he began to realize that it wasn't just a white problem, it wasn't just a Mexican problem, it wasn't just a black problem, but he realized that the issue fell on humanity alone. <clears throat> and I understand that, I can identify. I remember when I first became an atheist, a non-believer, a skeptic, I believed that it was religion that was just the main problem. But then I realized it was humanity and its decisions that it makes in our world that cause things to be as screwed up as they are. Well, Malcolm X, like a lot of leaders who are great and wonderful, stepped on toes. There were things that he said that were completely beyond what a lot of the hypocrites that are Muslims wanted to hear. There are Christian leaders out there that are the same way, where they say things and they do things that are beyond what other Christians are willing to do in their life. You see, there's two types of religious leaders in the world. Hell, there's two types of leaders altogether in general, where one leader will do a lot of talking and a lot of preaching, but he won't follow what he preaches routine. And they're just there to take money. Then there are leaders out there who actually walk the walk and talk the talk. There are leaders out there who actually believe what they're talking about and care and are willing to get down and dirty just to make sure that their God or whatever they believe in is accepted and understood. And that was what Malcolm X was about. Well, Malcolm X, <clears throat> it started getting to the point where Although he was helping out the community and he was doing all kinds of great things, there were people in the Nation of Islam who were getting offended, who were getting angry and who were getting upset, who started to believe that Malcolm X himself was a devil who did no good. There were also hypocrites and jealous and envious people out there whenever they listened to Malcolm X. They wished that they were the popular one, that they were the ones that people wanted to put their cameras on. They were the ones who wished that the words that he was saying was coming out of their own mouths. They wanted to be Malcolm X. 
And when they realized after many years that they could never be a great leader like Malcolm X, and when people realized that they were not going to be able to shut him up, they were not going to be able to debate him and destroy him and his own belief system, because he had formulated so well and he was so articulate in his speeches, they decided, and this is the nation of Islam that did this, Islam that decided to do this, they hired an assassination on Malcolm X. This is historically proven, and a lot of Muslims won't talk about this. A lot of people try to pretend as though the guy never existed, and they try to forget about what happened. But Malcolm X was killed. Like a lot of great leaders, like Gandhi, Gandhi was also put down. He was destroyed, knocked out of existence and everything, because he had some things that he had to say that people didn't want to hear. There's a lot of great leaders out there who actually care about what they're saying and they're trying to do the right thing. And although they might be confused, although they might be wrong about what they believe, at least they're trying and you have to give them an A for effort. Now I am curious about something. When a religion gets to the point where it wants to snuff out its own leaders and kill its own people, why would it do that for? You have to ask yourself, was Malcolm X a threat to Allah? Was he a threat to Muhammad? Was he a threat to Islam? Was the religion so weak and so frail in its beliefs and understanding and its infrastructure that they have to kill their own leaders? As a lot of you probably know, the Catholic Church was known for doing that for years. Anytime they had a leader or someone who was great and powerful and knew how to speak well and who could move people, whether you want to call it spiritually or because he was an inspirational speaker, what is the religion telling us as a people whenever it kills its own leaders, kills them before their prime? Is it really that afraid? Are the people of religion that afraid of words and facts and evidence so frightened that they would kill their own brothers and sisters? Well, you tell me. You've been listening to Brett Keane.